All right, Hans Temmerstone, fighthype.com, here with Bob Santos. My voice is a little bad, but That's how you okay. doing? Everything's great. We here in Minnesota, so everybody's voice is bad. It's cold as a mother out here. Brother, you don't got to tell me twice. <laughs> it's cold as hell out here, man. Um, tell me about the fighter you have on the card and what you're expecting, man. Well, obviously, we've got two fights on the card. Robert Guerrero, right, and the rematch with, uh, uh, with Andre Berto. It's going to be a tremendous fight. Uh, he's in tremendous shape. He was, uh, you know, out there with uh, Ruben Guerrero out there in Gilroy getting getting it done. They started the camp in Las Vegas and moved the camp at the very end in, in, in Gilroy. So it's going to be a rematch that was one of the, you know, fight of the year that led Robert, obviously, on to the Mayweather fight. And then in the main event, we got David Morrell Jr. And to me, you know, I always say this, uh, and I don't say it lightly, he's the, Roy, the new Roy Jones of boxing. That's, that's saying a lot, man. Yeah, you, you bet it's saying a lot. I, don't, I know Roy very well. He's a good friend. Actually, Roy's one of my favorite fighters of all time, if not my favorite fighter of all time. I mean, um, just the excitement that I used to get from watching Roy in the ring was uh, second to none. And David Morales, that type of fighter. I've been with him for a long time, from camps in Minnesota to camps in Houston. I've seen him in there with everybody. And uh, he's a second to none talent. I've said it in many, many interviews. I'll say it again. If he wasn't, if he if he was not boxing, he would be in professional baseball center fielder for the Yankees, or he'd be a safety or a receiver for the Cowboys in football. He's a tremendous, tremendous athlete. Cowboys, eh, you can take them. We don't. Hey, well, well, yeah, whatever, whatever team it is. If it's the Vikings, if it's the 49ers, if it's the Dolphins, whoever it is. But I'm just saying, he's that type of talent. He's he's a type of a supreme athlete. He can play professional sports and anything. And if you like soccer, we'll throw Ronaldo in there too. He could be going with that too. <laughs> So why at nine, about to be 10 fights, you think he's ready for a guy like David Benavidez right now? Or do you think that's even a little unfair for people to keep saying he should fight David Benavidez because he only has about to be 10 fights? Is that unfair? No, not really, because you got to remember he has a tremendous amateur pedigree. Um, and then you got to look at, in, in case in point, a lot of these guys, you know, when they, they have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 fights, even a case of like a Canelo's first 20 fights, which was done in Mexico, and you're getting experience, and you don't want to take nothing away from that, but experience is obviously is very, very important. But against limited opposition, those guys get experience. You got to remember, he fought for, you know, the WBA title and his third pro fight. So level of competition, he's been thrown in right out of the gate. And then you talk about when he fought the Uzbekistanian who was undefeated and was in camps with Canelo. So if you look at it from that perspective, maybe he didn't have the 15 fights that would right now he'd be 25 and 0 with limited opposition. He jumped right into the fire and he proved every single time to come out on top. And not with just basic performances, dominant performances. For sure. Um, shifting gears to um, Mario Barrios. He's That's my guy. Mario Barrios is my guy. He's, he's one of the top guys right now in the welterweight division. Um, did you get a chance to see um, Devin Haney's performance? Yeah, wow. Chamber? That was a pound-for-pound pound type performance. There's no two ways about that. I mean, it was a tremendous performance. And I actually got to see him in the camp because I had uh, a couple kids that I have, uh, uh, Starling Castillo, helping him get ready for the fight. So I was actually able to see him in sparring day-to-day over there in, in, in the gym. So I was expecting that type of performance, maybe not as dominant, but I was expecting him definitely to be victorious. And, and man, he, he turned it to a whole nother level. Do you think it's, do you think he's probably rushing it because he says that he wants to immediately now go to 147? You think he's yeah, he was calling out? us out. He was calling Mario Barrios out, right? So, you know, Mario Barrios obviously has a lot of options. You know, there's Boots Ennis on the table. There's, a, you know, a, a, a guy like uh, uh, Devin Haney and all these types of guys that are calling him out. So, you know, we have to see, uh, you know, what, what Al Heyman and, and Louis DeCubis Jr., uh, which path they decide for us to go and and uh, but Mario Barros one thing about him He don't turn down nobody. He don't duck. He don't dodge and he's proven that over his career And, and, and we'll be ready for whoever Al Heyman and Louis DeCubis Jr. Say we got to be ready for What happens in a fight between Barrios and Devin Haney? Is Barrios just too big too strong man? You know Devin's a big guy Devin's a big guy So I I, I, I do believe he's going to be better in 40 maybe possibly 47 than he was at 35 I think he was too big to get down to 35 he did what he had to do, you know, he unified the titles. But I think it was just, I think that was probably the best performance of his career is against Progress, and that was, his, you know, jumping up in weight. So uh, he proved that he can be in there with the big boys. And so, uh, 
But at 47, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Do you see? Do you, do you think Barrios could stop Devin, though, at 47? Or is that too early to say right now? You know, Devin's a very crafty guy. He's a skillful guy. He's got great feet. He can move around the ring. He's a good boxer. He's got a good ring IQ. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Jerron Ennis, you're probably the only trainer that's just like, we'll fight him. Because nobody's trying to fight that guy. No, he's, <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, you know, I definitely think uh, he's going to be pound for pound one day, one of the best fighters. Um, I just think I just think he hasn't got his opportunity. I don't got a bad thing to say about him. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of his, too. I think he's a tremendous fighter. I I think, uh, you know, he, he's, he's an unbelievable talent. I think him and Terrence Crawford would, would, would probably be a 50-50 fight. And, and I, I think he's more talent than Crawford, a bigger guy at, at 47. But Crawford has the experience. You know what I mean? He's been in the trenches. So if that fight was to happen, well, you know, 50-50, maybe, maybe Crawford 55-45 because of the experience. But it definitely would be somewhat of a pick and fight, a two to one either way. And uh, But uh, he's a tremendous talent. There ain't no two ways about it. And he just needs his opportunity. But that being said, Mario Barras, we, we ain't ducking, we ain't dodging, we'll fight, we'll fight him. What, I mean, obviously you don't want to tell me the game plan, but what do you guys kind of do against a guy like Boots, man? Fight on the outside, stay on the inside, he can do everything. So man, we better be ready for everything, right? Because, that, because you know, like I said, he's a supreme talent. Boots has proven that he can fight on the end, he can fight in all levels, right? So, you know, you just got to go out there and, 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 and put put your best foot forward. And Mario Barris is a very talented kid, a very, very skillful kid. He's a big kid. And, uh, and he's got a lot of talent, though, too. But obviously, you know, it's a tough task at hand. But, you know, hey, that's why they make the fights. Because a lot of times, you know, guys say, this guy can't beat that guy, that guy can't beat this guy. Roy Jones, like I said, is one of my favorite fighters of all time. And if you remember with Antonio Tarver, nobody gave Antonio Tarver a shot to beat Roy Jones. And he, and he pulled it off. So that's why they make the fights. Gotcha. And just on my last question for you, man. Um, you guys fought Javante Davis. You've seen Devin Haney up close. They're talking a lot of shit back and forth online. Who wins that fight, man? 35, there's no doubt in my mind, uh, Gervonta wins that fight. At 40, uh, I think it's be a much more competitive fight. But man, I'll, t I'll tell you, man, one thing, one thing about Gervonta Davis, <laughs> you gotta fight a perfect fight. He got the great equalizer. And he got a good high ring IQ too. People underestimate that. He's got great athleticism, he's got a great explosiveness. And he, you got to be perfect all 12 rounds, as we proved, we found out with Barrios, right? Unfortunately, we was winning that fight. Floyd came up to him in the 11th round and said, man, you're losing the fight. And he has the great equalizer that he can turn things around. So that's a fight that, you know, could go either way. But at the end of the day, he's got that great equalizer. And you slip, you make one mistake with Jermonte Davis, you going to sleep. So is that what you're picking? Would you pick Jermonte to get the knockout over Devin? Uh, man, Devin got great feet. I mean, I... I Look, I want to pay to see it. I can tell you that. That's all or, I can tell you. Or, or if you had to lean towards somebody like 51, 49, at 140 pounds. Man, you know, before I seen, uh, before I seen uh, the fight with Progress, I definitely, uh, you know, all the way, uh, Javante Davis. But after this fight with Progress, I mean, you know, it's, you know, but, ooh, boy, you put me on the spot, man. Uh, ooh. It's 51, 49. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, man, I, I wouldn't. Bet, I'll tell you what. I'm a gambler, man. I wouldn't put my money on it either way. I'm not mad at it. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. We got you. God bless you.